Oh, I lose again. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Rambling Hour. Yeah. And uh, I think today we are playing Pong. One hour of Pong? That's gonna be pretty damn boring. Okay, fine, I'll try to take the elevator. Yeah. How does this work again? It's been a while. Only two weeks, like usual. Ooh, fuck. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Uh, SWAT weapon, SWAT weapon. What the hell is this? Is this like, welcome to Earth? <laughs> I just started and it's immediate chaos. Wow, that doesn't even sound like System Shock anymore. That sounds like Diablo now. I know. Okay. Worst is down. So, how is your day been? <laughs> uh, filled with mutants, apparently. Yeah, quite. Don't oh, tell I actually me. use those. Right click? Does that do? No? No. I Drag it to your health bar, maybe? No, it's useless. It's absolutely useless. Oh, I can use that. So, that's quite a start. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. We thought it would be a boring round of Pong. It was not. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get out of this bloody elevator They didn't music. deal that much damage, though. No, luckily. Even though I was panicking like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, especially when it overheats. Does it make a sound or anything when you're trying to fire an overheated weapon? It still makes something of a sound, but different sound. Okay, so you actually should know that you're overheating and change yeah. your weapon. Still, it's not that easy. Yeah. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> but it's they don't make any stepping noise, that's a problem. only one. What's all that noise again? Ugh. More stuff to make you nervous. Yeah. So, has it been an interesting week according to you? I guess. Yeah. Uh, first Not of that all, much actually, but come on. a little bit of a fluff thing that doesn't really interest us all that much, but it is kind of surprising to see that this day actually has come. Square Enix has announced that the development on Kingdom Hearts 3 is now officially complete and they're just, you know, making sure that the game will have a smooth launch now with all the logistics and everything that needs to be done. Which I find kind of difficult to believe. It's like, are you sure it's done, Namura? You sure you not don't want to add in like another half year of development and make a couple of DLCs to flesh out characters that you forgot to write the story for? Are you, are you, are you completely sure? I don't think he's sure. Uh, I guess not, but yeah. We'll see. What's Personally, we... supposed to be. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine what this is supposed to be, but I can't make sense of these textures. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's uh, well, personally, we don't really have all that much. Like, actually, no feeling at all with Kingdom Hearts, so... We have no investment in the series whatsoever. We will We have no idea what the story is about other than it involves Final Fantasy characters and Disney characters in one place. And it's also a clusterfuck. And a lot of... Oh, what's that? They look like robot ants. Ooh, that's a big one. It's making weird noises at me again. Yeah. Reload! Yeah, that thing is pretty fucking big. Sparking. Or maybe use armor piercing shots if you have that. I should have that, but... Nope. Uh oh. <sighs> How do I know which I'm using? Teflon? Well, they're called Teflon. Standard and Teflon. What let's, does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> let's let's try it. <sighs> oh! We just made it. Okay. Didn't Make you sure get I'm the other dying. one down as well? Yeah, I got the other one down. 
Let's swap again to the cheaper weapon. Repairable. Oh, maybe that thing was repairing it. Oh, who knows? What's shooting, shooting you? Me. Oh, ah, bleh. Calm Keep down. Keep freaking out. Calm today. down. Oh, there's another one up there as well. There's a hole in the wall, the triangle. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it peek out. Well, grab the Teflon gun then. Let's hope that's the reason why. That seems to deal more damage, yeah, so either... Either the thing was repairing it, or these are actually working. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's now a bit more clear. I hope I'm supposed to be here. I suppose you are. You kind That's of, useful. You kind of mapped out the entire first floor, no? Yeah, I did, but I mean as in in this corner of the floor. Oh. Let's yeah, also well... also put down my panic save button. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so all those Kingdom Hearts fans who have been painfully waiting for all those years, it will be over soon. Yeah. So. It will be over soon. Yeah, I hope they uh, they enjoy it though. I hope they do, but I don't still don't give a shit about the series, man. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, we have actually been playing a lot of mobile games this week. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm playing mine for shits and giggles because I don't understand it. So am I, although I understand it a little more. So I have been playing the new Assassin's Creed Rebellion, which it's okay. It's uh, I'm confused by this layout. Anyways, <clears throat> well, just continue to this corner first. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very you know uh -oh. kind of typical base management with some turn-based explore and combat that's all based on die rolls uh, gameplay. Don't think it's gonna keep me interested very long but uh, it's neat to try out. If you haven't really played all that many mobile games before then it's it's neat to try. It's, it's pretty nicely made. My phone seems to lag a bit on it but I have had my phone lag Occasionally just out of the blue Sometimes when a lot of uh, programs are running sometimes when there's no programs running so yeah I think your phone is a bit under par, but that doesn't matter because we don't use them a lot for gaming anyway No, exactly, but it is Did you hear that blizzard? We have phones, but we don't care about gaming on them So we don't spend that much money on them. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, no? we have like <gasps> We have like four consoles and two really good gaming PCs here, so It's kind of yeah yeah. We would only play games while we're commuting, but we walk to our work, so we kind of need our eyes on the uh, on the street. Yep, we do. Debris. So yeah, and then you have been playing Azure Lane. <laughs> yeah, which I assume is basically the English localization for Kantai Collection. I'm basically look collecting boats that look like anime girls. Yeah. And it's, uh, well, you better talk about it, actually. H how is it? Uh, it has a lot of lollies. Yeah, of course, it always does. That, that does not necessarily please me. No. But yeah, that's that's a detail, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's the thing you'll have to live with, but... Yeah, that's kind of just what sexualization looks like in this case. Well... What's this? I would say that they aren't per se sexualized per se, and more just, you know, humanized. Yeah, but the thing is that you can always, almost always see a bit of underwear. Yeah. Which is kind of like, what's the point? Like, even just a pixel, it's like, wh why? Why even? Yeah. What would no, this be about? I don't, I don't know if it really indeed is like almost always or just that the ones that you can see some underwear is like leaving a bigger impression on you because I do remember we went over the ships you already own yesterday yeah. a lot of them are of the itty bitty titty club and yeah. possibly 16 year olds or younger uh yeah well <laughs> that, then you're not even talking lolly anymore honestly but uh, there were definitely a lot more that really looked more like children yeah but yeah. at least there were quite a few of them still that were like decently dressed at least so at least the way most great. of them talk uh, is not sexualized like only the ones with big tits can 
occasionally talk sexualized, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, you mean like innuendo in their, yeah. the, well, in their quips towards you, right? Yeah. Cause it's I not really dialogue if it's only... It also has way, way more resources than it any, has any right to have. Yeah, I kind of feel that about Assassin's Creed as well. And it seems to just be a thing that these you already came through here. Yeah, but I'm trying to see if I can just... It seems to be a thing that mobile games in general just seem to really focus on nowadays. I have a ton of different currencies that you need to balance out against each other. Mm. And they fuel gameplay and upgrades and... Yeah, it, 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 it gets a little weird at times. And Quite really, definitely. And it really makes you wonder, like, is the game just not compelling without all these or... Is this just because they... Have trouble balancing. <laughs> yeah, or, or maybe they figure out monetization schemes behind it, though. Usually these games only still have one uh, real money currency. Yeah. So, yeah, you'll have to go through there. Yeah, I'm just looking at the map so I have an idea what I'm doing. Yeah. So, I want to remember this. Yeah, that's the corner, right? Just in case. Yeah. You never know. It's making that creepy noise again. I accidentally put one again where I don't want to put one. How do I get out of this again? There. Yeah. You Doctor Ne- <gasps> I had to find this. Okay, you got him. Yeah, I was just struggling to select the fucking pipe. Yeah. Clearly. But this is the place we needed, I think. Because he would have uh, a key number to something. Well, that's the two uh, things you now picked up, I guess. Yeah. Where is it again? Is it in software? Is it in emails? Is it in logs? There you go. Okay, get ready for a pile of text, I guess. Yeah. Can I close this door again? Yeah, you can. I can even crawl through this if I want, I think. Maybe. We'll check that in a minute. Yeah. Okay, Darcy! So Showdown is charging up the lasers. Whatever else we do, we can't allow it to fire. We can discharge it ourselves, but who knows what it's aimed at. We can't fire it, but can't stop it. Oh. Listen up, Althea. I know how we can stop Shodan from firing the laser. Get the isotope X-22 from Gamma. Feed it into the shield generators on the reactor level, then put the shields up. Fire the laser into the shield and the laser explodes. Yeah, the this I already knew. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the number here? Ah. I was standing right next to him. Darcy was telling me something about the laser, something about overrides and a number. Cyborg assassin shot him in the back of the head. He didn't even touch me. They knew Darcy was on a something. This is gonna be an entire level of getting messages with there's a number you need to know and yeah. not getting the number! Ugh. Yeah, that might very well be it. <laughs> so, um, still speaking about Azure Lane, how is the gameplay itself? Pretty okay. Yeah? Uh, uh oh. <laughs> Look at the icon of the character. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that looks weird. Yeah. But, okay. Well, that's how he stayed alive so long, I guess. How? Because he can hide really well in this corner. <laughs> mm. As hard as it is for me to get in there. So it's it's pretty okay. Anything else? Uh, I think it's gonna get really really grindy. Yeah. Okay. And it, it, it's it's if if anybody has played uh, the Shin Megami Tensei one, it has a lot of the same mechanics. Like it, it, it's apparently the usual fare, I guess. Yeah. Okay. But wasn't it like a shoot 'em up game? Yeah, it has shoot 'em up mechanics in it. So rather than turn based combat like we have in Shin Megami Tensei, the mobile game, whatever it was called again, uh, this one just has you uh, shooting other ships in combat. And actually, you can sort of continuously play it if you are willing to replay a lot of levels. <laughs> yeah, it seems that that's also a funny thing that I saw in Assassin's Creed is that. Uh these games seem to really focus on you replaying the same levels a lot to farm currencies and that yeah. sort of stuff. It's 
kind of strange. And they Assassin's Creed even gives you options to like if your characters are over leveled to rush through them. Mm. So they automatically do it. But the Shin Megami Tensei one had that as well, and this one also has an auto combat option, but I haven't tried it yet because I'm that not that over leveled yet. Yeah, no, it's not even auto combat. The uh, Assassin's Creed one is literally just oh yeah, we we just auto solve the entire level. But the problem is you need all your characters to f fulfill certain requirements in terms of level and specializations and such. Mm -hmm. And they need to be at maximum hit points, it seems. And when your characters are done with such an automatic mission, they automatically lose hit points, meaning that you can't use them anymore. Oh. So in the beginning of the game, at least, with the small roster that I have, I have I think like five or six characters... You can't really do all that much considering you need three characters of uh, to do any mission. Mm -hmm. So right now that whole auto system seems to be not really an option for me. Which is kind of annoying because there's at least one mission that I need to replay a lot now to farm out enough character specific currency because this game does that. So I can level him up and yeah. The map doesn't match up with what I'm seeing. Oh well. <laughs> Nothing new yeah. there. Yeah, I was indeed looking. But yeah, it seems that there's a bit of an extra level to this place, huh? Yeah. So there's a way to possibly get down there and... I suppose you're just gonna keep making noise there as long as I don't find a way to you, huh? Yeah. <sighs> keep moving. Also, there's a corpse lying up there. Ah. Yeah, bot. Yeah, I saw the bot, so I wanted to try and snuck it down before I got close to it. Should I top up? Your bullets? No, my health. Ah, uh, I think it's okay for now. Just be careful. <laughs> Can't you tell I'm really, really scared? What is this? You're always really, really scared, Jump but... disc? Uh, I'll try you later. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a thing that would... Okay, wow, now you might want to care. Uh, heal up. Mm -hmm. One more. So, yeah, in terms of games, that's been mostly it. We actually finally went back to Guild Wars 2 mm -hmm. for a bit as well. Yeah, we'll probably continue later today. Yeah, we, we still don't have the roller beetle. No. Nope. So we're heavily behind, guys. Well, two story chapters behind, but yeah. We haven't played in months, but that's nope. fine. It's fine. Yeah, we were just not really. We don't even play like the it. really high level content, so. No, we don't we raid. This. We don't raid. We kind of occasionally try to get our fractal level up to the max, and we never get there. There's another buddy there lying, I believe. Or. Oh no! It's one of those clocks. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> it's broken, alright. Yeah. Let's just map out the corners of this room. This looks like just some place they had communication. Yeah, it could have been a small theater even. Yeah, like, guys, I've discovered this now. I discovered how to turn humans into massive mutants. Well, those uh, Teflon bullets sure seem to do a lot of damage. They're helpful, but I'm afraid I might run out. Showdown. Oh, hey. You showing up again. We haven't really seen any cameras in this level yet, huh? No. Cyborg 43S. The current strain of virus is approaching its toxic perfection. We are using human and This is so disturbing. Hmm. Guard the executive and residential zones on level 6 well, my children. I sense an infiltration. Oh no, that's an x-ray machine. I thought for a minute that was one of the cyberspace things. Hmm. Right. Okay. So, apart what from that, doing? what have we been playing? Not much, really. Oh, radiation. Ah, of course. Because it's an x-ray thing. Yeah. Do we want to check that place? I guess. Just quick in and out. 
Nope. There's nothing in there. Okay. <laughs> Let's not use that button again. <laughs> Interesting. Wait, before I go, another save. I know, I'm panicking wow. again, but... Why are you so friggin' scared? Because I don't know where I am. <laughs> I was doing better previous episode, but... Wow. <laughs> one shot, one kill. Doesn't happen very often. Another, another showdown. Another showdown. Oh, I see another bot. Got him. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Then, a uh, bit of a big kerfuffle big from, big? from this week. Call it big? Which one are you talking about? Well, so... At the end of last week, there was a little bit of a stir-up between uh, gaming YouTuber Yong Ye and gaming journalist Jason Schreier from Kotaku. Which, honestly, I feel... Ended a lot more productively than, you know, people tend to expect from these situations. Although the comments weren't very productive. Yeah, but <gasps> we'll, we'll get to that. I got access. Oh, don't you need to get the two of them? I don't know, it seems the same thing. Yeah, but you never know. We'll see. Yeah. Because I got access. So, what basically happened is that... Um, Young got mentioned by in an article uh, from uh, Mr. Schreier, where he was, um, well, first of all labeled a YouTube provocateur, which uh, is an interesting moniker. Yeah, I keep in mind biocontamination. Yeah, it seems so. So this place is, I think it's broken. Yeah. Look at those cables there. Oh, there's a monster up there. Oh, they're locked. Ah, okay. Anyway, hurry up a bit here because you're... I know, I know, but let me loot. Yeah. So... Keep talking about the... Uh, yeah. Thing. So, so... Uh, Young Ya got, uh, got called that in an article. I actually don't really know what the article was about anymore. Do you remember? Uh, it might have been related to the Diablo thing. Um, and, I, and I get uh, Schreier's choice of words in the sense, sense that a lot of YouTube stuff is sort of provocative in the sense that the way words are chosen is not as careful as written text. And uh, you also have emotionality that comes through. Yeah. That can also stir up people. That's something that none of these YouTubers can help, not even Young Yet. Like, he seems to come across level-headed, but sometimes he gets a bit... How should I say? He gets too much into it? Yeah, he gets worked up. Oh, hey, cyberspace! Of course. There we go. What's that? A program? Security ID? New accesses. Okay. Yeah, but... Anyway, um... Oh! Do I need to dodge it? Or no, that was the exit. No, I need to know if I need to dodge it or not. I touch it. No, it's the end. Okay. Really? Huh. Interesting that's so short. Well, I got access from it and some software that I didn't pay attention to. Yeah. Do we need to be there anymore? No, that's just an emergency thing. Okay. So, but anyway, um, instead of uh, just having that whole situation end up in the whole round of name calling as people kind of expect at this point that happens since gaming journalists right now do face a little bit of uh, animosity from the general gaming public. Yeah, Let's it's put been it like that for a while now. Let's put it like that. But the thing is, like, I shouldn't bring this up here, but whatever. The stain of Gamergate is still very heavily upon the community and upon the journalists. It never got properly resolved. It just died out. Sorta, I suppose. And I, and I know there were, were a lot of people name-calling, there were trolls involved on all sides. It just... It was a messy situation and nobody came good out of it. No, no, that, that, that's for sure. But, um... Can't you just open the door? Oh. Yeah, of course, you hear all the bots. Yeah. And that's another cyberspace access thing there. Yeah. 
I wonder, did you accidentally shoot those monitors or...? They might have already been broken. Hmm. That would actually be cool if the monitors would... Oh, then again, we've already seen monitors explode. Yeah, because I didn't want to see... Uh... Showdown. Uh, no, uh, Diego's face, at least once. Target identifier? It's probably for cyberspace. Discarded. Absolute discarded. <laughs> oh, where's that? Yeah. That's probably one of the screens you can't destroy. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, continue that uh, thing yeah. because you're getting distracted by me. Oh. Yeah, contrary to uh, what we'd expect, uh, expected to happen, uh, they actually ended up uh, talking to each other in a video that got posted then on YouTube for a little, almost an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And I say it was a pretty productive uh, use of everyone's time. It, it was a pretty decent talk where they exchange ideas and you know the state of the industry in general hey you solved it yeah the oh. state of the industry in general <gasps> 199 199 uh can you write that down yeah. somewhere we need this yeah yeah laser code 199 because we need it we need the safety security overwriting yeah it's important see i'm writing in all caps one nine Nine. Then I can put it with all the other information afterwards. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they discussed the state of the industry and gaming journalism and the gaming public in general. Mm -hmm. And I personally, what I indeed find most interesting, well, one of the more interesting uh, claims that uh, Schreier made was that while the gaming public is actually pretty angry over a lot of things and that anger is pretty uh, well founded honestly mm -hmm. it's it's justified according to him he does feel that there is a little bit of a lack of priorities where he personally for example said that he didn't find the microtransactions in Assassin's Creed all that annoying Compared to how it was in, for example, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Mm -hmm. And that is... Well, although I might not really agree with his specific examples there of what was and what was not annoying. Mm -hmm. um, the very idea that, you know, there are things that merit anger more than others. I find that, although that's a deeply personal thing, there is a, a little bit of truth in that. Yeah, the thing is that uh, now it's just all outrage, and it's one level of outrage. It's the same problem that you have with uh, radical feminists, you know? They're, they're angry about everything. Or at least so they come across, yeah. Because, again, it's just a bunch of individuals that all ball up, so... Oh, this can't be good. Yeah, it seems that this area in general is just slowly killing you. Yeah. Might Can be because of the whole security rating thing? Yeah, the security rating might too much. Yeah. Well, Data. there's a health thing. I'm just trying to get all the info I can get my hands yeah. on. There you go. Um, that's where you came from. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where to go now. Is it this the way? Seems like it. Yeah. Man, these cyberspace levels are weird. Yeah, but at least I'm navigating it better than and I was before. And honestly, when uh, Schreier then went over his uh, his personal list of his own hang-ups, really, it, I kind of just get the feeling that he's really, you know, he's seen some, uh, he's seen pretty much at this point that the general gaming public doesn't, and he just, mm -hmm. you know, gets more angry about the financing behind uh, video games like. How Bobby Kotick, who is the CEO of uh, Activision, mm -hmm. takes home an annual bonus of 28 million. At least last year, that it was 28 million, and that's just you know that's not his wage. That is only his end of year annual bonus. bonus. That's, that's insane. That's... But this is a problem that we see all over uh, capitalistic-driven uh, economies. Just 
All these insane bonuses, like for bank managers and just car manufacturers, the CEOs get insane bonuses. But at the same time, they have this excuse that they're expected to work insane hours. But nobody wants you to work insane hours. The only reason you're working insane hours is because it's impossible to manage these companies yeah, anymore. Yeah, and even then, I think that those insane hours still don't really add up to bonuses. Yeah, 28 that, million, what the fuck? That run into the tens of millions. And indeed. also, one of the main problems I have with a lot of these companies, their goal isn't anymore to make entertainment. Their goal is to make profit. That's a very different goal. Yeah. And, and the, the fact that it's all profit-driven these days is just... Creating a situation where uh, what I want from games doesn't get made that often anymore. I need to just ex expect it from indies. Yeah, well, you should nu uh, nuance there that yeah. it's it's not one thing to make a profit is not the problem. The it's problem nothing is, but profit. The problem is indeed when it becomes the well, you know, even 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 if you say that it's the primary goal for a company, that's kind of logical. They're they're just in the business to make money, after all. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to earn your your living, mm -hmm. doing creative work, everybody should be, you know, it it should be nothing but normal that if you do creative work, you can you can live off of that, especially if you're good at it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, uh, nobody's nobody should ever deny that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the the skills are just tipped so much in favor of you know maximizing profits now, for most of the big publishers. That yeah, it's it it becomes kind of hard to to feel that they actually still care about their uh, fan base indeed, and that that's kind of unhealthy and. Sometimes I wonder when we say that, oh, you know, 10, 15 years ago they still cared about us. I don't know, actually. Did they? Or was it just that it looked like that because, you know, we just bought a box and we went on our happy way. And mm -hmm. they, they, they produced the boxes and you knew that some games would come every year, like Call of Duty. Because back then that was already a yearly release, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But, you know... There were, there were still things like, oh, you know, EA made another black and white. That's that's kind of neat. You don't see that often. Or... Was that EA? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's EA. That's EA. <laughs> Keep forgetting. No? Yeah. Wait, was Blue White Line Hat under EA? Yes. I thought it was under Microsoft. Later it went to Microsoft, yeah. When they mm -hmm. exclusively started working for, uh, for Xbox for the Fable series. But before that it was EA. Mm. Um... Or you know, like, oh, hey, there's there's a there's a new Burnout. That's that's also kind of a neat little mm. uh, game series that people seem to have sort of forgotten at this point. Although there was a pretty decent re-release apparently, yeah, uh, like two years back. So that's nice because you don't really see all that many like arcade racing games where crashing is like one of the main mechanics of the game now. Yeah, huh? doesn't happen that often. No. But you know, even even back then, I'm pretty certain that companies did that game publishers did pretty dickish stuff. But uh, yeah, it just gradually changed and became nothing but the dickish stuff. Stuff almost. It, well, it definitely became more more visible. Yeah, and people actually started caring more. And yeah, it, it's it's a bit. Gamers uh. became more consumer savvy. But not always in the right direction, it seems. Mm, I and, guess. I, and I think that is kind of what 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 Schreier also pointed out. Yeah. Like, yeah, we we now have microtransactions to deal with, and understandably, not everybody is all that great with that. And then there is like the whole season passes and pre-orders and uh, all, uh, games as a service that are really. Pushing the the boundary towards what's acceptable for quite a lot of people, even. Um, but yeah, then you have some games coming out, and they just have microtransactions. And some people might think, yeah, they're just microtransactions, like Trier does with uh, Assassin's Creed. Whereas others do feel that, hey, yeah, the game's experience is really tailored more towards. Well, with keeping those microtransactions in mind, like for example, experience boosters mm -hmm. to level up your character faster. 
Now, I personally think Assassin's Creed does not need a leveling system. Yeah. And that might be because I am old-fashioned and I actually started playing the series back when the first one was out and stopped before Assassin's Creed 3. But I honestly feel like, yeah, what, what, what was wrong with those games? They kind of just, you know, they had you upgrade some equipment, but you technically could even do without. But the leveling system that we have now, yeah, it kind of really turns it into a numbers game. It does. Which is not exactly, that doesn't really feel like Assassin's Creed to me. I'm afraid of that door. <laughs> yeah. Not that elevator. Ah. Huh. Interesting. There's a lot of noise here. Yeah. Is it an elevator? Yeah, it looks like an elevator. <sighs> Jesus, stop it, game. Open a door. It's locked. <laughs> Not that door, then. It's funny that you now see when you hit something. It's like, I see a spark. Yeah. Normally that should be enough of an indication that I hit something. Well, I guess it's uh, trying to help you out a little. Hey, aren't these more of those processing units? Yeah, but I'm taking a look around for a second. Yeah. If you, enter that, if you enter that room, I will kill you. Level security now 2%. Good! Uh, you took a berserk, hun. Did I take the wrong one? Yes, you didn't take a healing pad. That was a berserk. Whatever that does. Uh, what? that does what it does. What the hell? I think I'm high. <laughs> sure seems like it. Wow! Look at those colors! Can it stop? Nope! Uh-oh, what's happening? Uh, reload. Oh god, I am so tripping balls! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, it's over. And I think that Berserk is really only good for melee weapons. Yeah, I guess. Behind you? No, it's nothing over. there. Awesome. I feel that <gasps> that was less bots than last time. That's possible, but still. It freaks me out. Yeah. But that so, was good. So yeah, that was already honestly, in my opinion, quite insightful, actually. Yeah. And though I also think that for, for Shreya personally, that might also actually be a little bit of a grounding there. Mm -hmm. That he should maybe realize that indeed he has a very different point of view than your average game consumer. Mm -hmm. And he seems to be somewhat aware of that, because he does say that... Uh, what was it again? How, how did he say it? Um, that he should watch out what he's saying on Twitter? No, twi the, the, the Twitter thing is something else still, though we I, I do want to briefly go over that, even though it will just amount to Twitter hate, because, yeah, we don't like Twitter. Yeah. Reload, by the way. Um, today. But he um, he he already acknowledged that oh, that's where they came from. That uh, that game companies, for example, towards their fans and their uh, and their customers, they honestly don't really communicate all that well, no, right? Not and at all, he, as a journalist, he he has insider information. He he has contacts. He can easily he reach out. He has people out. talking to them because they trust him to uh, at least filter it for what uh, wouldn't destroy them. <laughs> exactly. So he he says, yeah, I get a lot more information. Six two three, whatever that is. Might that be? Another one of those codes that one of those pass thingies we're talking about? Maybe. Oh! <laughs> uh oh! This might be a problem. Uh oh. Yeah, you need to empty something up. Which part of my inventory is too full? Ah! <laughs> I uh, just stacked battery kits, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Can't just use one of these to pop up and. Dump up a few. Yeah. And I'm gonna need a few of these as well. What kind of access cards do I have? 
Science, medical, group one, four, bird one. Whatever that means, so. No. Anyway, take that stuff that you wanted to take. No, you threw it out. Yeah, but where? What does it do anyway? Use on panel to. S oh, I don't need this. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, he seems to be aware that indeed he gets more information than most gamers do. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, he, he does say that, you know, game companies should should communicate more towards gamers, and I do agree with him there. But, you know, he's a journalist. He could definitely step it up there as far as he's allowed, because like he says, a lot of a lot of things that he gets to know are actually information that's under non disclosure. Access panel unlocked. Okay. I just figured out what that was you wrote, used for. Oh, it's one of those puzzles again. Yep. What? The crosses need to touch and then they... Yeah, but I was just checking how it was interacting because it was bizarre. Robot production mm. cancelled. Good! Ah, that's indeed gonna help. Um, so yeah, I mean... Yeah, like, like he said, a lot of information that he gets is from anonymous sources and it's under non-disclosure, so it's kind of difficult at times, yeah. Yeah. But... It's also difficult to get trust from people. Yeah, yeah, and like he said, there's a... Uh, he has definitely pissed off a couple of people over the years, uh, like... representing companies like Bethesda. <laughs> yeah, Bethesda. <laughs> Yeah. But the thing I absolutely don't agree with from gaming companies is uh, the idea of using, what should I call it, blacklists. Yeah, blacklists towards the press are pretty iffy. I will definitely agree to that. It's, uh, on the one hand, I mean, I suppose that you kind of could make a good case for them because, you know, if you have a journalist that actually just full on slander slanders you and spreads lies both about you as a developer and your games, yeah, you kind of might be like, yeah, why the hell are we still giving you uh, free preview codes? Why the hell are why the hell are we putting giving you ammunition basically to make us look bad, even though it is unjustified? But on the other hand. It seems to indeed be kind of used more of a, more in a way of like, yeah, we didn't really like what you said about our last game, so you can forget ever getting a scoop on us again. It's yeah, I suppose you know there's quite some nuance on it, but yeah, blacklists are handle with care material. Let's put it that way. It's not handle with care now. That's not, that's something I'm sure of. Well, you mean as in that companies don't carefully think about putting someone on the blacklist anymore? Is Nor do they cur curate it in the sense that they ever uh, revert these things. Yeah. Or rarely revert it. I suppose. Uh, personally, I kind of just mostly feel I don't want to be the person making that kind of decision of like, we're putting this journalist in, uh, on our blacklist. It's out on that. It's definitely a decision that I'd rather not make, mm -hmm. personally. But I can definitely see the reasons for doing so, it's just, yeah, kind of a shame that it would come to that. Mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, putting putting a journalist on the blacklist, even if it's a disliked journalist by some groups, that still kind of puts you, puts you in a bad light in my opinion. Yeah, you're gonna have to go through it. <laughs> but yeah. Radio activity. So there's a force field around it. What am I using? I pressed the button. Yeah. Oh, you, you changed those two outer panels. Uh, from place, I believe. Yeah, but I'm using something. <laughs> yeah. 
There's my map. There's my map. Yeah. Okay. Too many F1 buttons that do stuff. <laughs> Welcome to System Shock. I couldn't find what to do in there. No, maybe come back later. No, we tried that. You couldn't get through. Come on. You can't get through. No, you can't get through. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm like an annoying little kid. Let me in! That was, that was honestly, in my opinion, one of the better parts. Mm -hmm. uh, he also uh, acknowledged that he does occasionally come across on Twitter as abrasive. And, well, kind of like we feel about it, Twitter is just kind of the worst platform possible. And it's garbage. It's just plain old garbage. There's no point to that platform. And it's stupid. Why does it exist? And it's stupid that people just keep using it, including, including Jason Schreier, honestly. I, I don't want a Twitter because... I'm afraid I'll wind up like Jessica Price, uh, just yelling at people and uh, destroying my career or something. <laughs> yeah, but why would you... I mean... Yeah, then again, sometimes you will get a little bit yelly that I need to reel, reel you in already. So... I, Me too. Me too. I... Uh, mm. I lose my cool. <laughs> it's really easy to lose your cool. That's, yeah, that's it's really easy problems. to lose your cool. And like Jason said, it might be a thing... It might literally be a brain fart of the moment, but it's kind of chiseled in stone as soon as you put it out there. Mm. And I feel that just, you know, humanity in general can't really deal with that and can't tweet responsibly or Facebook responsibly or any social media platform really. And in Twitter it's really, for some reason Twitter is really out there and really visible, which I do find a bit funny considering that, you know, back when it was just Facebook I feel there was some of that, but it was definitely not that much. Or am I, you know, thinking back more favorably? I think you're thinking back more favorably. Ooh. I wonder what happened here. You didn't do that, I think. <laughs> no. Let's first try this door. <sighs> the door is Just nice. go in there. Ah. Okay. Oh, that's one. Yeah. Want, 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 want. Before we know it, we can't use this either anymore. <laughs> we haven't even used the dart gun at all. We already have a pistol. Yeah. I guess why they put repair of your weapons in the next game. Yeah. As soon as you have a weapon, it's kind of pointless to... Look for other ones. Yeah. Well, except that, you know, there might be weapons that you're more specialized in. Because keep in mind, System Shock 2 had different weapon specializations. Yeah, still. Even exotic weapons, which, uh... I always found that whole exotic weapon no uh, nominator a little bit of a cop-out. Yeah, we don't want to label them in some way. Yeah. But, yeah. You want to know a fun fact? I read somewhere that I will need a sever head at some point. Ah, really? Yeah. Wow. To open some door. Oh, a retina scan or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> That's grisly. Engineering reports. Site level engineers are still unable to pinpoint the start of the research. Okay. Ah, that's those breakers that you found. Yeah, and I think I might have just already fixed that. <laughs> hmm. Whatever it was. That's a corpse? Okay. Stripped, it seems. More than stripped. There is no face on it anymore, either. Mm. Might be lying face down. No, that's also possible. And then again, its feet are pointing up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's not think too much about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And... Isn't this where I started? This is where I started. He kind of echoed, in my opinion, my feelings about, you know, humanity is not ready for Twitter, or social media in general. And I don't think we ever really will be. No. 
And, and all of the problems that, that we have with social media and all of these discussions is um, we tend to tre treat disagreement of beliefs that we consider core to ourselves as an attack on ourselves. Yeah. Please, people, stop doing that. Try but to be aware of it. Honestly, I feel that that's not limited to social media. I think that's kind of part of the human condition. What is that? I have no clue, but... After tripping balls, you're now shooting balls. Weapon is about to overheat, by the way, so... Yeah, but I'm fine. Zero G mutant? Huh. Something that was developed to live in zero gravity, then. They don't even have loot. Oh. Uh. Matter converter. I guess that's useful stuff, but what do you do with it? Yeah. I'm still looking for the isotope. Oh yeah, right. Hey, that's something you got access to. Yeah. Nice. Go slower. There might be more of those zero Save. G blobs here. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a bit paranoid. A but bit? we've been making good progress at least. Yeah. That's good for me. Yay, energy. Have we seen the healing pod that was working here? Not working, broken. Yeah, we saw a broken one, that I know. I saw the cables dangling from it, it's like, yeah, that one's probably broken. Well, I could still try. If it didn't instantly kill me, then I knew. Well, fun. Human corpse. EMP grenades. Aha! I want that. Engineering access card. Science access. Awesome. Keep getting access. That's oh, it's one of those things that you click it. Uh, yeah, there you go. I just wanted to be sure that I was angled correctly before I opened it. You know. Yeah. Mm. What a maze! Yeah. What a maze! Yeah, this is a pretty maze-like building. That gun is nothing that you... Wait, would this lead to that other part? Oh, I think so, I think so. Get in. Yeah. Yep. Huh. It's handy. So it just leads to the other side of this hallway. That's interesting to know. Now time for the existential horror. You have been disassembled and reassembled on the molecular level. Are you still you? I don't think so. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Energy drain mine. What are you gonna do with that shit anyway? Uh, don't walk on it. It's gonna drain your energy then. Can I shoot it? Doesn't seem like it's doing anything. Uh, see if you can get close enough and dismantle one. Or something like that. Huh. Okay. Wait, maybe I can... How do you want... How do we use grenades, actually? Yeah, I don't know. It's movement... Weapons... Control quotes. Alt quotes. What?! what? Yeah, but what? we're already using right click for some. What can we put this on? Shit, what can we put this on? <laughs> okay, this is now officially a no grenade playthrough. Yep, <laughs> we don't know how to use them. <laughs> okay, let's just save the game and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, I laser control. I can't press this button yet. <laughs> Well, we can for funsies. I saved anyway. Yeah. Shall we? Sure. <laughs> you saved, so... Oh my god, there's several levels you need to go through before you can click it. It's yeah, really it's made against idiots. It's... it's... Thank you. <laughs> we destroyed planet Earth.
to escort you to the celebration. Awesome. Yay! <laughs> we lost! <laughs> okay. So now we know. Oh, yeah, but there were multiple ones of those, right? Of what? Of those controls. Controls? Like in the in the entire game. Weren't there more? Laser controls? Yeah. No, there's one. Okay. But we need to watch out with it because we're, we're supposed to use it to destroy the laser, not destroy Earth. Yeah, by shooting it when the shield is up or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and we need to op up the shield in the reactor level. Okay. So that's why... Uh, but... Yeah, the panel but, doesn't move. But you look like one of the movables! Yeah, well, they say they don't. They don't swing that way. They don't swing that... So they're gay panelings? Or maybe they're not. I don't know. What else is there to talk I'm about? I'm not judging. Uh, oh, yeah. S since we were talking about uh, video game publishers being scummy and shit. Yes. Uh, there was a... The UK Gambling Commission, I think, came out with a report that uh, shared that uh, child gambling, I think it was quadrupled? Even? Yeah. The, it was a lot. It was a ridiculous yeah, number. Yeah, indeed. In in two years' time, the number of children gambling has, according to their uh, polls, uh, quadrupled, which, uh, yeah, that's quite alarming. And it seems to depend a bit on who you ask, because there have been two separate studies by two separate agencies. Uh, I do have to note for uh, being correct in the information we're sending here, even though I started this out with talking about game publishers being scummy, the reports themselves do not associate this with the loot box stuff. Well, one of them did not. The other one did. The other one did say that children got introduced to gambling via loot boxes and uh, such in video games. Yeah. And video game gambling in general. And we can all agree that children are not yet ready to make uh, correct decisions regarding gambling when they're not adults yet. There's a reason why the limitation in most places is 25 years. Yeah, but it seems that, you know, the, uh, after reading through the articles detailing this uh, quickly, it, it's it really, it's not just that, you know, uh, all, the, all those kids gambling were doing loot boxes apparently was a wide range of things ranging from, you know, just playing cards for pocket change with their mates to buying scratch cards, that sort of stuff. Yeah. It, it was really... It was some bizarre stuff that makes you go, what? It, how do you get that ID when you're, like, 12? <laughs> well, I think it, it, this was mostly about teenagers, I think. Yeah, but the age range seemed to be 11 to, I think, 16. Yeah. And 16-year-olds, though, you know, I'm personally still like, yeah, why the hell would you gamble your pocket change away with your mates? Well, let's face it, you came from a family where you were taught early on the value of money by not having a lot of money and getting a lot of no's because it's too expensive. Yeah. Am I not wrong? Yeah, you're right. For the for longest time I had like 10 so euros a month. So you did have that protecting you in a certain sense. Yeah, I suppose. So just some batteries. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, oh, that. Check this. Yeah, yeah, you checked. Uh, yeah, that did definitely help me to just stay off of it uh, completely. And the only scratch cards that I ever scratched were actually like uh, cards that were given to me by my parents on New Year's because occasionally we did uh, that. My parents did the same thing. That's the only introduction I've had to gambling, and it's literally. Uh, was framed as we just do this because it's New Year and because we we just want to do it once. Yeah. We don't do it the entire year round because it's pointless. We don't expect to win any money. That's it. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I ever bought a scratch card myself. I've never bought one either. I uh, I don't. Well, I might have been there when my mom bought some for uh, the New Year stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, we didn't. We neither of us either went out and bought a scratch hey, card with our own money. <laughs> yeah. And bought a scratch card with our own money for ourselves. Then mm. we we never no, I don't think either of us that. has ever done that. Yeah, scratch cards are just fun ones, but th don't play them to fucking money. What? Yeah. Yeah, the chance that you win. I mean, 
they do go like, yeah, one in four chance that you win, but you know. Yeah, I think they're uh, obligated by law to share this yeah. share this chances. What is this place? I don't know, but it has a button. Oh. There you go. Oh, it's panic, an elevator. Panic, panic, panic. Oh, we're here again. Ah, interesting can I go down? <laughs> Yeah, you can. Okay, so you unlock the shortcut. <laughs> Neat. This this level is oh, all sorts of weirdness. There was another breaker there. Just Cyborg conversion cancelled. Standard station restoration <gasps> procedure. Feels online. good. This level is safe officially now, but I still haven't found the isotope. And you're sure that it's on this level? No, I'm not sure, but the video is almost over, so uh, we can probably uh, check it in the intervening time and have me figure out where to go. Yeah. Before we go, time to shit a little bit on Fallout 76. <laughs> what? What? Yes. So Fallout 76 has been in the news a lot this week, and mm -hmm. personally, I mean, I'm, I'm not interested. Negatively. <laughs> I'm not interested. I'm not going to play it either way, mm -hmm. but... Two instances that were pretty hilarious, in my opinion, how it went, uh, went to the news. First off... Um, this is suspicious. Yeah. First off, there was news that players managed to launch three nuclear bombs at the same time, causing the server to crash. Awesome. Which, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's cute, in my opinion. Just like, oh no, too much mass destruction, the server goes down. But then... The really fun one, in my opinion, was one player who somehow managed to become immortal in the game. Now, for those who are completely not in the know, Fallout 76 is a post-apocalyptic survival game. Ah, uh, no, I know what's there. It's the, the one room that's sh shut off until I do a certain thing. Yeah. Um, so, it's a multiplayer post-apocalyptic survival game. Where you're trying to either survive together with other people online, or you try to kill each other. Now the point of that whole survival and kill each other thing is kind of moot when people start running around being immortal. Yeah. And apparently that player himself has already reached out to Bethesda like, Please kill my character, fix it, I have nothing to do in this game. Uh, because uh, that person was responsible and didn't want to engage with other people as long as he was immortal. Yeah, and that, that that's that's fair on him. That's that's commendable because that, a lot of people would just abuse the fuck out of it. That's <laughs> very commendable indeed. But on the other hand, yeah, when it's a survival game and the whole point of the game is trying to survive as long as po uh, possible, immortality kind of sucks the fun out of it, I guess. It does. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's just ah, uh, I I just find I just find that one hilarious. Yeah. Ah, okay, it was that room. But I, let's just make sure I have the corners. Hey! So now you have a shield. Awesome. <laughs> because I wanted to scratch the map. Did I check this one? Uh. Hmm. Okay, that was just it's a bit of a Yeah, it's a bit of a fluff article, it seems. Well, fluff articles are fine as well, because these yeah. guys are doing more things than just destroy shit. Yeah. So, I guess we'll stop in this blaringly red room. Oh, wait, there's another cabinet. Okay, fine. Let's uh, call it a day. Yeah. See you next week with more abduction. Yeah, more abduction. And I actually cleared an entire floor this episode. Woohoo! Yeah, that one actually pretty fast. See ya guys. See you.